Okay. Good afternoon. We are Team 7, uh, conformed by Marco Barreto and Gary Lara. Um, we're going to talk about our project, which is Water Pollutant Agents. Next one. Uh, this project is, is about the Zapotlan Lake, which is located in Jalisco, in Zapotlan El Grande Municipality. It's the second largest lake in Jalisco, and it is uh, monitored by the Jalisco State Water Commission in four sampling points uh, along the lake. Next one, please. Um, there are so many water quality variables that allowed us to know how a water body like a river, a lake is, uh, and if it is healthy for the population near or, or also for the biodiversity. Among these, we have total suspended solids, chemical oxygen demand, phosphorus and nitrogen content, among others. And these are often measured in authorized laboratories um, from, from samples taken from the lake. Next, please. Um, well, for our project, we uh, have data from uh, September 29 to 2009 to April 2018. Uh, these data sets include information of three numerical continuous water quality variables, which we are going to explain later. Um, and the purpose of obtaining this data was to analyze uh, which groups of pollutants uh, exceeds the permitted levels and associated with uh, different activities carried uh, around the lake and, and some milestones such as, for example, the changing type of agricultural activities and also the introduction of, of water treatment plants. The next, please. Um, well, our variable definition, uh, we have the total solid, which is the amount of solid mass per liter of water. Is this, this is relevant because the solids are related with sludge deposition, um, patho pathogens protection, among others. We have the total nitrogen variable, which is the amount of nitrogen per liter of water. It is related with a phenomenon called eutrophication, which is the overpopulation of algae species in a water body, which um, tends to uh, uh, sequestrate all the oxygen available. And this affects all the, for example, fishes that live in, the, in a water body. The biochemical oxygen demand is the amount of the amount of oxygen required to chemically stabilize the matter. This is related with the oxygen availability for the animals that live in the lake. And we have uh, other two. The first one is lake locations or the sampling point of the lake. We already said that there are four. This is relevant since each uh, lake or board has a contact with different human activities and also the time, which is the period of the measurement. Uh, this is relevant because uh, there are some milestones that we already said, like the introduction of treatment plants and the change and the change in the type of agriculture. Uh, the next, please. Well, we have, as we said, three continuous variables, uh, which are biochemical oxygen demand, total solids, and total nitrogen. These are continuous and generated by measurement of natural values. Uh, Without further analysis, we can consider that they have a normal distribution. They follow a normal distribution, sorry. But we will perform goodness of fit, goodness of fit test to see if it's real distribution of each variable. And also we have uh, four categorical uh, data, which are the lake locations, the sampling points. They ha it has four levels, uh, a level per, sample, per sampling point, 61 observations per one, and all these uh, categorical variables follows a uh, multinomial distribution. We assume that. And we have three uh, time, three different time uh, categorical uh, variables. The first one, which is divided in four levels corresponding to the seasons. And the second and third one uh, distributed in two uh, range of time. Uh, which cor corresponds to the milestones of change in agricultural activities. This is the time two. And, this, and the time three corresponds to the introduction of uh, uh, treatment water plants. The next one, please. Next, uh, we have the summary of the data. So we have our three variables here. 
And for the BOD, we have the minimal values, the mean and the maximum values, as well as for the uh, solids, uh, the mean, the max, uh, and the mean. And for the nitrogen as well, we have the summary of the data. In the next one, we can see the scientific hypothesis that we have five of them, which are the, the, the lake location has an effect over the biochemical oxidant demand uh, variable because we have four uh, different stations to, to take that, that variable from. The second one is the season that we have autumn, winter, summer, and spring, which is the time one uh, categorical uh, variable. And this has an effect over the total nitrogen uh, variable. The third one is the time over the years that it has an effect over the biochemical oxygen demand variable. The fourth one is the uh, agricultural activities, which is a time two categorical variable around the lake, and it has an effect on the total solids and total nitrogen variables. And the fifth one is the introduction of the sewage treatment plants around the lake, which we take it as a categorical variable uh, time three. It has an effect over the total solids and biochemical oxygen demand variables. Uh, next. We have yeah. the statistical hypothesis, which is uh, Gary is going to explain them. Yeah, thank you, Marco. The first one is uh, the, the hypothesis that there are no significant difference between the average biological oxygen demand among the lake locations. It is just a comparison of means. The you no know, hypothesis says that there is no difference, and the alternative says that at least one is different. The next one, please. Uh, the second one is that there are no significant difference between the average total nitrogen concentration among seasons. It's the same as the previous one. Uh, we have the, the average of nitrogen concentration be in each season. And this is the null hypothesis, which means they are all equal. And the alternative is that at least one is different. The third one is that in order to see if, if the biological oxygen demand it, it changed uh, uh, well, uh, along the years. We will seek to uh, perform a polynomial regression of n order. And our new hypothesis will be that uh, if the n term uh, it's equal to zero, this is the new hypothesis, then the polynomial does not fit well for the given data. But it is different from zero, then the polynomial fits well. The fourth one, it's that, um, next one, please. The fourth one is that there are no significant difference between the average total solids concentration among periods with different agricultural activities. Here, let me to explain. The change in agricultural activities, it is contained in the categorical variable named name time two. Time two, as we already said, has two levels. One level is from 2009 to 2014, and the second one is from 2015 to 2018. These two time frames are uh, well, time frame one, time frame two. We are uh, we were going to calculate the average of total solids concentration in the period one and in the period two. Why? Because of two periods. Because in the middle, in 2014, there. Uh, agricultural change, agricultural activities change was introduced. So we are going to see if the average total solid concentrations uh, uh, have been affected from that change. And uh, the five, the statistical hypothesis five, will be uh, the same, but with the total nitrogen concentration. The new hypothesis, uh, I already forgot to say in the previous one, but is that the the average of this variable it's equal it's uh, they are equal and the alternative the hypothesis that they are different for the sixth uh, statistical hypothesis we have that there are no significant difference between the average total solids concentration among periods with different presence of water treatment plants this uh, function functions very similar to the fourth and fifth uh, statistical hypothesis because they are working two time frames. We have time frame one, uh, which is uh, before the introduction of water treatment plants. 
and we have the time frame two that what that is after and we're going to see if this variable the average of this variable is different between those periods so the new hypothesis is that the new hypothesis sorry is that they are equal and the alternative is that they are different the seventh the statistical hypothesis is the same that the six, but with the biological oxygen demand. Um, and there are the, the null and the alternative hypothesis pretty the same, but with the, another variable. So for then the next, well, the parameters identifications, uh, since we are assuming that our data follows a normal distribution, as we said uh, previously, in order to test our statistical hypothesis, we need to estimate two principal parameters. First, the means to perform the, the test, for example, the, the ANOVA test, and also the, the variance to test if to fulfill the, the ANOVA requirements such as uh, homogeneity, so, such as variance homogeneity, sorry. Um, however, this could, however, uh, in case the data doesn't follow a normal distribution could, uh, could be performing non-parametric uh, tests such as Wilcox or Man with U. And also, uh, in case we need to calculate, for instance, the probability that one of our response variables falls in a fixed values range, it will be useful to estimate uh, the parameters needed uh, or related to that variable distribution or uh, in a better description to find which uh, distributions uh, what fits better on our data and calculate its parameters, which is what we already do, we already made, sorry. The next one. And well, for this one, uh, we calculate the uh, distributions. We identify the distributions for our three variables using the R risk distribution library. And for our first variable, which is the TS, the solids, we find out that it follows, follows a logic distribution, logistic, I mean. And for the next, next one, uh, which is the nitrogen, we see that it follows a key square distribution. And finally, for our BOD variable, which is the biochemical oxygen demand, it follows a gamma distribution. And for this presentation, uh, we take the BOD variable to find the prior, the likelihood, and obtain the posterior. Uh, the function is presented in terms of the parameters beta and alpha. And as we see, the, the, the gamma distribution is widely used to fit variables such as environmentally, uh, meteorology, and uh, climatology uh, purposes. We can see the function uh, right below. And we can see also that the parameter beta is called the scale parameter because values other than one either stretch or compresses the, the probability density function in the x direction, as we see uh, over here in, in this image. Well, um, for, uh, in order to calculate the Mm, to do the posterior, we need to choose uh, a prior distribution since we don't have any reports of the biological oxygen demand uh, prior. Uh, we use an, an informative uh, Jeffries prior uh, distribution. We already saw how to calculate this in class. Well, we start with the, with the um, uh, Fisher matrix, the square root of the Fisher matrix. Uh, here's there is an important thing to to mention, which is the gamma distribution depends, as my partner said before, in two parameters: the beta and alpha, which are the the shape and rate uh, parameters. Uh, in order to avoid a complex calculations, we uh, fix it the alpha parameter and do the Jeffries uh, calculations of prior distribution. Considers only the parameter beta as a variable. Here we have the calculations. This is the, the negative expected value of the second derivative of the logarithm of the gamma distribution, well, the density gamma distribution. We perform the calculations and then we have this, which is that the, prior, the Jeffries prior of the gamma distribution is the square root of alpha uh, over beta. 
And also in order to do the R math, uh, we uh, integrate this from zero to infinite and we obtain uh, that expression. Next one, please. And also for the likelihood, as we already saw in class, this is the product of the density function, which uh, we developed it in, in software. And it led us to this expression, which is uh, pretty big, but in the, and we solve it in the R code that we will show later. The next, please. So then, uh, after all the calculations in R, we obtain the Jeffrey's prior calculation and we obtain its uh, function as shown here, which is the prior. And from that prior, we multiply it by the likelihood of our data uh, variable. And we obtain the uh, probability posterior distribution, which is shown here. We can now go to the R code and show you how uh, a quick run to how this looks like. So first of all, we uh, read the data and we see it here and we filter that to obtain only the, the BOD, which is the biochemical oxygen demand. We can see a summary here of the data. Uh, then we fit it to uh, the several distributions and we obtain that the gamma distribution is the uh, first one which it fits. After that, we plug in the CDF function right here to obtain the, the prior. Then we obtain the prior here with this line of codes. And then we plot it and obtain the empirical prior Jeffrey. <clears throat> then for our likelihood, we follow up a, a gamma distribution with our data set or uh, most likely the variable. And we have the fixed uh, variable, which is the alpha parameter. And we change the, the beta parameter. And we uh, run this uh, to obtain the likelihood. And then finally, we obtain the, the, the probability uh, function, which is the posterior, multiplying the likelihood and the prior. And we obtain it right here as is shown. And well, that's everything for this presentation. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you for listening to us.